All right. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 in chapter 6 of Matthew. All right. You got nine? You got nine, buddy? After the manner, therefore, pray, ye, O our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right. Is how we address God important? Yes. yes. Do you say, the man upstairs, hey, are you? <laughs> no. Huh? no. What does it say to do there? So I'll pray like this, our Father in heaven. Yeah, you treat him with respect and you ask and you speak to him with the highest regard that you know. And and what about his what about that word, hallowed be thy name? What does that mean? Mine says, May your name be honored. Yeah. Mine so he's holy. Yeah, he's real he's he's telling you to treat God with utmost respect and to recognize God is there and praise him. Praise his name. Now verse ten. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what is this verse talking about? What does this verse show us about Christ? It's talking about God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Christ is teaching us to be submissive. Yes. He's submissive to God, and he's teaching us to be submissive to God. And he's we're submissive to God's will in heaven and in earth. Now verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Now is he talking about, is Christ telling us just asking for our food? No. Mm -hmm. The, uh, what's he telling us to do here? The nourishment of our spirit. Our daily needs. Yes. You know, it's uh, it's our daily needs, whatever we need today. But now he's not talking about give us next year what we might need then. Because it, Christ taught us to live each day at a time. One day at a time is the way he teaches us to live. We, we can plan, we can look ahead, but we're living today. That's right. And so today is what God is dealing with, is meeting our needs on a daily basis and we plan for next week I'm already planning for two or three weeks up from now and, and but we're living today so you kind of got to divorce your plans and divorce the past live today you know and 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 stay with God daily all right verse 12 and forgive well, 12 and forgive us our sins Forgive us our debts as what? We forgive our debts. Forgive our debts. It says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We get somebody that offends us, do we forget them? Forgive them? Seems like it takes a long stretch of action. Mm -hmm. Well, now that shows that forgiveness is a two way street. I don't remember the exact place, but there's another place here in somewhere in the New Testament that talks about if we don't forgive, God won't. I'd have to find it, but if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. That's right. It says, "Forgive us our debts, as we forgive others." So if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. True or false? What she said. True. 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 So when do we want, when do we want to get forgiveness for for when do we want to forgive somebody their debts toward us next week? No, it should be immediately. Two, two months from now, no. you know. No, we want to do that as quick as we go. Oh my goodness, you know, it's time, and then we repent from that. And repentance means to change our ways from that and not do it next time if we can avoid it. You know, and that's how we clean up our lives. All right, uh, where are we now? 13. 13. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. There's some more to it. Mm -hmm. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from the evil. Mm -hmm. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
and lead us not in temptation. It's in temptation. Yeah, it's in the uh, in uh, and lead us not into temptation. He's asking God to shield us from any from any bad temptations. Don't don't lead us in there. Don't let us get into anything that's going to cause us to want to want to uh, do satanic type stuff. You know, get in cults and things like that. Keep us away from that kind of stuff every day. We're supposed to pray and keep and to keep us keep us from it from the evil stuff. Now, verse 14. Yes, if you forgive others for the things they do wrong, then your Father in heaven will also forgive you for the things you do wrong. Now, isn't this, this is kind of interesting. This is the second time in this prayer, isn't it? To yes, it is. Forgive, forgive others, and God will forgive you. Mm-hmm. So we're not to have grudges. And it's, and it's important enough that Jesus said two different ways. In the, in the in these short little verse these these five verses here four I guess one two three I guess it's six six verses little ones. now what is verse fifteen fourteen and fifteen what's fifteen say but if you do not forgive men their sins your father will not forgive you yours now look in there there's three times mm-hmm. so. So three times in, in this model prayer, he's telling us to forgive our other, our other people, right? So that's important. And it's, a, it's probably one of the most failing things that, that I did for years is not to forgive other people. You know, I'd hold a grudge for a week, you know, two weeks, and then, you know, and that poor guy's going off, you know, wondering why I'm mad at him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the only one who's still carrying it. Yeah, yeah. He's already gone on down the road and forgot about it. And, and but because it bothers you, you know, you keep turning it over and over and over. You know, it pretty it festers and makes a sore in your life. And until you you said, Lord, forgive me. And then you do something. If you really offended this guy, go and apologize to him. You see what it and that, and uh, so this our relationships with each other is kind of governed by our relationship with the Lord. If we go to the Lord ask forgiveness and talk to Him on a daily basis, then we're going to be in tune with the Lord every day. And then when we have a have a, a little flare up with a with a friend or somebody we don't know, you know, then we're going to be in tune with God and we're going to say, Okay, God forgive that guy for saying those words. And you're not going to hold no grudges against him. You're not going to, two or three weeks later, you're not going to catch him out on the backside of the street and beat him up for saying I mean, those if words. If someone has done something really, really bad to you, they yeah. cannot go back. I mean, because it would be detrimental to you. And you're on. Do you just go to the Lord and take it down? Take it to the Lord. The, uh, and the Lord, if someone's done something to you and it offends you, take that to the Lord, pray for the guy. And my, I'm, I'm, my parents a person, yeah. were, were very, and I mean, and it bothers me a lot because I, 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 I want to forgive them, but it's hard to. Mm-hmm. And pray, can't. pray to, just pray to God, mm-hmm. and and ask Him to forgive you for not, and help give you for not, for not forgiving them, and help you to forgive them. Okay. And then, and then every day, Lord, help me. So and tell you, and, and, and then, Lord, right? and then you'll know. You'll say, "Okay, I'm going to turn this loose okay. and let God handle it, and then move on." And then, if you see them again, don't, right? Don't think about that. You know, you know, just just like God's handling it, and I'm not going to say anything or do anything on my own. I'm going to let Him handle it and move on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, says so when somebody offends us. Then, then we got to, and, and over here we're to pray for them and and to to help them to find Christ. Because the reason they don't do that is because they are not following Christ's teachings, even if they say they're a Christian. They're not doing the things that that the Bible's teaching them to do. And so we got if we're doing the things the Bible's teaching us to do, we're going to forgive them and help them to come to Christ. 
And Sometimes if you go to the, the person, they pull you back into the evilness that they have. Right. Now, let's turn over to Psalms. We're going to do these real fast. Uh, Psalms is in the middle of the Old Testament. Psalms 65 2. Anybody got that? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Psalms 65 Big verse. Oh, know. that, oh, thou that hears prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Who hears prayer? God. And who needs it? All of us. Every human flesh person needs prayer. Needs to pray. Now let's go back over into the New Testament to Romans. Where's Romans? That's right after Acts. Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. Romans, what was it? 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26 and 27. <clears throat> now these are kind of important verses here. Who read last? Thomas, your turn? Oh, well, you read that last. So I'll go ahead and read this too. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not that we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intersection, intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that it is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. All right. Well, don't those two verses say a lot? Mm -hmm. Who is actually speaking to God? Our Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, a, is, the, is the part of us that lives in us that actually speaks to God. When we... When we bow our heads and pray, or when we're walking down the road and we pray, we say, Lord, help me get a job. And the Holy Spirit says in God's language to God, help him find this job. Exactly. <laughs> and we, you know, and we, don't, we actually speak in the Holy, to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to, to God. We actually don't. Speak direct to God, the uh, we ourselves. Now the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities, and that's one of our infirmities. We looked at that the other day. Is we we can't speak to God because we're not holy. You know, we still have sin in our lives, and we can't speak directly to them. So, the so He provides the Holy Spirit to give us direct access to Him, and so. It, don't be afraid to ask the Holy Spirit for something, because it's just like talking to God personal. And so when you're talking to God, the Holy Spirit is the first one who intercedes the prayer, and then He passes it. To God. He He sends it on to to God. Yes, it is. But we pray to God, right? You pray to God. You address God to Heavenly Father. You address God, our Heavenly Father, with respect, mm -hmm. and then it's the Holy Spirit then that that actually calls sends it up to God. Now let's go over to Revelation five eight. He takes, out, he takes out all the typos. And all <laughs> yeah, yeah, takes out all the typos and, and the sin. <laughs> well, you you, you got to be reverent. You got to go to God in reverence and treat Him reverently. And you need to treat the Holy Spirit reverently also. I mean, you know, he... But sometimes I panic. Because, see, the Holy Spirit is actually God's Spirit living in us. And so, so, he, so that's how we have constant contact with God, because He actually lives in us. Yeah. Revelation 5, 8. Let's 
many marks in there, I can't find it. All right, Autumn. And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they held gold, bo gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Okay, so this, the prayers of the saints, prayers of God's people are described here as what? They have these, these elders and everybody's having, they have 20, have every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, and all these odors are our prayers and from the saints. So now let's look at 8, turn over to Revelations 8. Three and four. Okay, Lindsay, you want to read those? Yes, sir. Another angel came and stood at the altar. This angel had a golden hand for incense. The angel was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's holy people. The angel put this offering on the golden altar before the throne. Keep going. Yes. The smoke from the incense went up from the angel's hand to God. It went up with the prayers of God's people. And out of the angels' hands. It says, And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angels' hands. So, now where does our prayers go? Directly to God. Mm -hmm. And what are they to God? They're precious to God. And they're... And they they are they are like uh, uh, inspiring to God for us to pray, and so we want to do this for ourselves. It helps us. For our friends, it helps them. For our enemies, it helps them. So this is this is how how we can see here. We have a helper to help us pray that lives inside of us. And our prayers are desired. So we're not imposing on anybody. Oh, not imposing on God. God says, pray every day. And pray often. And pray and pray continually. Now, uh, let me see here. I want to show you all something. If I can find it. <laughs> but, but what I want to show is how many references they are on prayer in the that's just in the concordance part not and there's also other, other times so when you when you want to search out uh, something in the Bible if you can turn over to your concordance you can find all kinds of references in a little practice you learn how to look for what the section you're looking for and uh, now, 